Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Knowledge 16, brought to you by ServiceNow. Here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and Jeff Frick. Welcome back to Knowledge 16, everybody. This is theCUBE. This is day two for theCUBE at uh, Knowledge, our fourth year here. The Cube goes out to the events, we extract the signal from the noise. We find the people that really know what they're talking about. And April <laughs> Carter is a practitioner. She's a senior IT operations manager at cars.com. You, you want a car, go check out cars.com. April, exactly. thanks for coming on theCUBE. Thank you. So take us inside. Well, first of all, talk about cars.com. I mean, very competitive industry you're in, right? It's very um, competitive, lots of emerging markets. You're transforming things, you're disrupting, and you're banging heads with, everybody else is trying to do that, but what's happening in the business? What are the real pressures that are, they're putting on IT? Coming up with those new services, really, and, and really delivering quickly. So we're very much an agile shop, and we're doing continuous integration and continuous delivery is the big things for us right now. The need for speed. Yeah. All right, so take us inside the world of, of IT service management, your world, you know, what's it like? So basically, our transformation was, you think of us as a dot com, so you think that we're you know, ahead of the game, but when I got to Cars, they were very paper and spreadsheet driven. Email is still, even still, very key to what we do. You're rolling your eyes when you say that. <laughs> I do. We can relate. It annoys me. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, ServiceNow has really helped us to really start that process and really rethink the services we deliver to our employees. So everybody thinks of that external face to cars.com and that's what we focus on so much and we forget that internal face. So making things easier for our employees. Okay, so um, maybe start with the, the journey of ServiceNow, you, you brought ServiceNow into the organization? Yep, three years so ago. You, you had had experience in, in prior lives with uh, not with ServiceNow, no, but okay. with other ITSM vendors, and they have always been very painful. Um, so when we did our um, bake-off on what product that we were going to use, you know, when they came in, they weren't we weren't really considering them a contender. Uh, How long ago was this? Sorry, three years. Okay. Um, but when they came in and they did their demo, they you you know we were in the system and. We were like, this is a little too good to be true. <laughs> and then they say they, we, we could be implemented in three months. We're like, yeah, right. Right, <laughs> that never happens. But it all came to fruition and we were implemented with, you know, incident problem change, the basics, you know, uh, knowledge, uh, an employee self-service portal with probably 30 or so orderable I IT items. And it was a big deal for us and a huge success. And how long did it take? Uh, Three months. Three months. Then you got a cake. We, we did get a cake. <laughs> Everybody gets a cake. Everybody gets but a cake. But they don't miss that. You must have that in service now, so they don't miss that request. That last Time process. For a cake. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, what was, so the cars before was really paper based, spreadsheet based, email based. What was the business impact? The business impact is really trying to drive um, our business partners in HR and and even in the development space, to really try to rethink the way they interact internally. So HR, we implemented an onboarding um, automation. So we went from multiple forms that we had to fill out as hiring managers to, down to one. So that was a big deal for us. Plus, we were manually creating user accounts. We were manually provisioning you know, hardware and access. We went through that entire process at about six months after we implemented ServiceNow to really try to grab a hold of that process and make it easier. Because we were delivering um, our new employees their, all of their things on time that first day, because that's our goal. But it was extremely painful for the service desk and those folks that do that provisioning so we wanted to make it easier for them, and we were able to. Okay, so you you, you brought in HR as well as you recruiting, see? but yeah, the, okay, the so HR okay. piece is a little bit more difficult. So we have le we left that piece out. So when you said onboarding, yep, you meant onboarding. So from a recruiting, uh, so as a hiring manager, you yeah, basically right. submit the form to, to um, hire right. somebody, and then all the way through to provisioning all of their access. And that inter interfa integrates or inter interfaces in some way, shape, or form with your HR system, or? Um, it doesn't today, it integrates with the, the recruiting system. Right, okay, which yeah. is separate from the HR yes. system. Yep. O okay, and how does that integration occur? 
so basically what, what we did was we set, stood up a form within our catalog. So as a hiring manager, I can fill out all the information I need from um, the position that I'm filling through you know, their salary requirements and all that kind of stuff. Um, plus all of their access they need, once that person is hired, all of that's in, their, that, in that form. I can also save that form so as I need it in the future because I'm never gonna remember what each person needs. So I can save that form as well. But then what ServiceNow does is sends that, all of that data over to Silk Road and actually implements all that data for the recruiter so they don't have to manually enter it because they were manually entering it before. How do you find stuff right, in this <laughs> giant content repository? Just um, great search? It's just, it? we, we have just great search capabilities. Yeah. Yeah, so it's that simple. Yeah. Because I can never find anything on my laptop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very organized. So it's one of those things that the, the CMS that we have, the portal that we have implemented now, um, the design when we were implementing, because it was three months, we didn't really, we were thinking about everything. It was a very broad scope when we were implementing. So we didn't really think too heavily on the design of the portal. And I think that the organization of the portal is what probably um, annoys me the most at this point because people have to navigate through so much. So with the news, I'm very excited about the new CMS that they're pull, pulling in um, Helsinki, which will actually uh, help us to actual redesign that portal and get it so it's not so deep. So it was, it was, you're saying it was very hierarchical before. Yes. Um, and so now you're, you're able to develop with Helsinki a flatter structure, is Exactly, that right? and it's much more easy to manage because right now it's kind of hard to manage, especially if you don't have the, the technical skill set to do so because it's, it's not easy. It's more like nested folders versus labels. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Love labels. So, yes. <laughs> so talk some more about the kinds of things that, that you want to do with, with the platform. So there's a couple things where we really want to push HR. So HR is very, very paper-based. They love their paper, actually. So we implemented a, a process. <laughs> they love it. That's exactly who Fred was targeting. The mail room with all I'm the green paper, paper, the green paper, the blue paper. Do not I love take paper it. too. We you even see, implemented yes, um, a uh, HR status change form that you know is a very, very large process. So any anytime you want to change an employee's status, whether it's giving them a raise or changing their their location that they're based, we fill out this paper form. So we automated that and put it into ServiceNow. Um, it goes through approval processes, so it's even auditable now, or at least much easier to audit it. And at the end of the design process with the HR folks, they're like, well, as long as I can print it out at the end, I'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's not, not really the point. <laughs> Upload it to Evernote. <laughs> The other really thing that we're really excited about is actually, um, so with the continuous delivery, continuous integration that we're doing on the development side, is we're opening up a lot of APIs that our developers can use to automate a lot of their processes. So we want to automate our release cycles. Right now, everything's somewhat manual when we're doing release. Um, there's still people at the keyboard. It's not wholly um, manual, but we want to get to that point where they just click on something in JIRA and it, it initiates a Jenkins, Jenkins creates you know, changes and it automates it all for them, but it's still completely auditable from our perspective. If you had to take a, create a benefits pie um, and, and you had to allocate a portion of the value, let's say, that's received by sort of IT versus outside of IT, what would that pie look like? I would say the biggest benefit is you know, that em employees. So my goal is is to make the employees' lives easier. I mean, and, th and that's the way I evangelize the product. It's really, what can I do to make your life easier? What can I do to take some process that's very heavy and make it lighter for you? Um, that's the biggest, biggest benefit. Um, the other thing is the ease of development on the tool. So we don't want to go out and buy something every time a developer decides it wants to do something else. So the ease of development, so we can build small apps. We have a library app, so they can check out Kindle books. They can check out Kindle, um, even logins within the tool. They're just little apps. We're not going to go somewhere and buy that, but we need to be able to, to do that. So we can do that easily within the tool. And it's funny, in making the employee's job 
easier is this nice second order effect where your phone doesn't ring. Exactly. <laughs> That's my whole goal. <laughs> or I get less email. <laughs> Don't tell them that little secret. We're just doing it for you. <laughs> April, can you just you talk about building these you know, lightweight apps? Describe the skill set of the people who are building these apps. Are they you know, hardcore developers? Are they low code developers, both? I think it's a mix of both. So we have some hardcore developers that JavaScript pretty much 24-7. And then we have you know, the admins who, well, I, can, I code within the tool myself, but I'm definitely not a developer. But it makes it easy enough for me to be able to do those little snippets of code that I need to make a form easier for somebody, to make it prettier, to make it behave like the way it does. So you're not, you've never been a developer, you've never written nope. code? Nope, never, but I still do it in Never were a computer now. science major? Or? No. Okay, but so you no, you said no, I'm like a no. Biology right. major. Really okay, so all right, but, so you're smart, but so. Still, still smart. Um, okay, right. Okay, but and, and so I want to dig into that a little bit. So you are able to build apps or at least improve apps. Absolutely, and I think there's there's multiple ways to do it. Obviously, research the internet can tell me how to do a lot of stuff. The community has been very helpful. There's also share the where you can find you know. Little, little apps that will help you along your way as well. So they make it very easy to actually kind of build out your, your core product. Did you have to go through training to get to that point or was it just sort of autodidactic or? Actually, knowledge has been most of my training. We did training at the beginning um, when we implemented, but I haven't taken a lick of training since. And you mentioned Jira, and just every time, mm -hmm. these stories make me think of Jira. It mm -hmm. sounds like you know, we're using kind of best practice in the hardcore software development part of the house, and now bringing that over into the less hardcore software development side of the yeah. house, but still very similar types of techniques and processes. Absolutely, yep. That's great. So, bumper sticker on Knowledge 16 for you. What was, uh, when, the, when the trucks are pulling away from the Mandalay Bay, what, from April Carter's standpoint, what's it going to say? <laughs> So the, the one thing, there's a couple of things, I guess. <laughs> you know, I, did, I always find vendors at, at the show. So I found, um, we're implementing MOOCsoft right now. It's, a, it's an event management tool, and we're literally going through the process as we're here at the conference. Um, but it's, it's an event management tool that I can tie into ServiceNow, I can create, manage my critical incidents through being the OC. Critical incidents are my, my bread and butter. I have to make sure that those go off well, and they, that we reduce that time. And I always find products here that I'm like, oh, I want to look into that. Um, we found one downstairs just yesterday that help, is going to help us hopefully manage our mobile communications. So all the cell phones and tablets and everything that we have in our org is and then dealing with the external vendors like Verizon and AT&T have been... Fun. <laughs> <laughs> or <Very> not. painful. <laughs> Maybe not quite fun. Yeah, so I always find something good here and, and I learn a lot of new things. So it's, it's always been very helpful. And how me. many years have you been coming? Um, this will be my fourth. Your fourth, all right. Same as us. Ours too. Yeah. April, awesome having you. Thanks so much for Thank coming you on theCUBE. You know, CUBE newbie, did a great I'm job. A newbie. Awesome. <laughs> now you're a CUBE alum. Now you're an alum. Okay, excellent. All right, thank you. Thank you. Okay, keep it right here, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest of theCUBE. We're live from Knowledge 16 in Las Vegas. Right back. Every once in a while, a true breakthrough.